As we said, she is a force to be reckoned with. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome this year's Tara Singh Higher Award winner, Ms. Kathy Gannon. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am so honored to receive an award that champions free expression from an organization dedicated to protecting our right to freely tell the stories that need to be told. I am also hugely grateful to be here when so many of our colleagues and friends are not, having given their lives chasing down those stories. And so many others are recovering or living with horrific injuries that have changed their lives, and still others are sitting in jail wondering what tomorrow will bring, all because they sought through their stories, their photographs, and videos to make us more aware and more understanding of the world. It has been a brutal year for journalists worldwide. According to the CJFE, 90 journalists have died so far this year. And according to Reporters Without Borders, another 176 have been jailed. We are being hit from every side. The likes of the Islamic State hold us hostage and brutally execute us to further their demands or punish our governments for things we have no control over. The FBI pretends to be an AP reporter, oblivious or indifferent to how their actions compromise our rights and play right into the hands of the likes of the Islamic State, putting the lives of journalists in the field, on the front line, in danger. And no one has it harder than local journalists, the lifeblood of every news organization. I remember doing a story in Quetta, in Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan province. It was about local reporters caught between the vicious lashkar e militant group the often brutal Baluch secessionist movement, and an irresponsible government. I interviewed Irshad Mastoy. He was with a local news agency. He said he routinely received calls from the militants ordering him to publish their comments verbatim or die. Usually the government press people, usually the call was followed by one from the government press people warning him that publishing the statements by the militants is an offense punishable by death. Oh, by, by jail, sorry. <laughs> it's an offense punishable. The militants wanted to kill him. What, what do you do, I asked. I publish them. I don't want to die, he said. But on August, 28th, on August 28th this year, he did die. He was shot and killed, along with a young reporter who was in his final year of journalism school. Still, there are no arrests. I don't think anyone is even looking. It is because of this indifference shown by so many governments in both the developing and the developed world that organizations like the Canadian Journalists for Free Expression or the Committee to Protect Journalists are so important. They are the antidote to indifference. They remind us of who we have lost and they warn us of what we are in danger of losing. If I could also just take one more minute to say a few a few thank yous um, to my family in Pakistan and Arizona who couldn't be here, um, to my family who is here, to my nephew Patrick and his wife Gail, my brother Robert who has been there to support me, and to my sister Patricia Ann who has not left my side since the beginning of this ordeal. She has been my hands, my friend, my sister. To my friends, many of whom are here, who have showered me with kindness and love, and to the Associated Press, who is represented here tonight by Senior Vice President Kathleen Carroll. It was AP that found the remarkable surgeon who literally rebuilt my left arm. When this happened, I didn't know what to expect, but AP has surpassed all expectations. They have been kind, caring, and devoted to my progress to getting me through this. Kathleen has been my advocate, protector, and friend. Months ago, the AP president, Gary Pruitt, knowing this was going to be a marathon, said, Kathy, I just want you to know 
that as time goes by, we won't forget. We will be there for you if there's anything that you need, and they have been. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.